Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Shuang. Leading up to last year's coronavirus pandemic, a new generation of tax-savvy and free-spending citizens helped power rising consumption, a growing driver of China's economy. Many used short-term loans to pay for expenses such as uh, prestige cosmetics, electronic gadgets, and costly restaurant meals. They found credit easy to obtain thanks to Ant and other Chinese financial technology companies that provided unsecured loans to millions of people who didn't have bank-issued credit cards. In 2019, online loans accounted for as much as half of short-term consumer loans in China, according to estimates from Fitch Ratings. Now, it is about to change. Chinese regulators are stepping in. They want to rein in the excessive debt-fueled lifestyles of the country's youth. New financial regulations are forcing lenders to reassess their business strategies and have sparked a reckoning about the American-style borrowing and spending habits of China's younger population. Starting in 2022, and and its peers will have to fund at least 30% of the loans they made together with banks, a rule designed to make online lenders bear more risk. In recent weeks, a grassroots campaign on Chinese social media dubbed Coming Ashore, a metaphor for becoming debt-free, has been gathering steam, with people sharing their experiences and the regrets about overspending and borrowing. On microblogging site Weibo and Xiao Hongshu, another popular social media platform, people have posted photos of shredded credit cards and screenshots that show them closing their online credit facilities. Some described clawing their way out of debt by reducing daily expenses and avoiding unnecessary purchases. Daniel Zhi is a partner at KPMG China who leads its financial strategy consulting service. He said, a top-down crackdown on overspending has prompted a national soul-searching. The regulatory action has put a lid on the whole online lending industry. In November, a day before Ant's blockbuster initial public offering was pulled, a column by an official from a division of China's banking and insurance regulator said that while consumption is a pillar of China's economy, financial institutions and fintech companies need to act responsibly to protect the rights and interests of their consumers. This official said financial tech companies allowed people to borrow excessively, causing some low-income people and young people to fall into debt wraps. Other Chinese state media outlets have also criticized the fintech platforms for encouraging young people to overspend. Last month, a report from China's central bank said the country is trying to increase domestic consumption without relying on consumer debt. Default rates for short-term loans have been low, but officials worry about the risks that could arise if excessive borrowing isn't curtailed. And, which is controlled by billionaire Jack Ma, is China's largest provider of online short-term consumer loans. The owner of the popular payments app Alipay had the equivalent of $267 billion in outstanding consumer loans as of June, making up nearly a fifth of China's total short-term household debt. And personal lending services Huabei and Jiebei, meaning just to spend and just to borrow, were used by about half a billion Chinese citizens in the 12 months to June alone. Most of the funding has been supplied by around 100 banks and other commercial lenders and partners with them. 27-year-old Mona Wong works in the financial sector in the central city of Xi'an. She said that at the end of last year, she owed an equivalent of more than $15,000 to various online lenders and banks including Ant's Huabei and the credit card issuers. 
The debt, which totaled roughly 15 times her usual monthly income, was largely the result of her spending on Salvatore Ferragamo shoes and other branded items. A few months ago, during Alibaba's annual single-day online shopping festival, Ms. Wong said she used Huabei to plunge on items including bottles of Fiery Mao Tai liquor, Lululemon uh, yoga clothes, a Dyson hair dryer, and a vacuum cleaner. These just look like bargains that you should not miss, she said. Ms. Wong said she later realized she had overstretched her finances and has had some sleepless nights. Fortunately, she said, a bonus she received in February helped her repay half the debt, and she is now trying to carefully manage her expenses to pay down the rest. Ant and its peers used to run advertisements that promoted liberal spending behavior. One promoting Hua Bei, which ran last October, featured a 37-year-old construction worker taking his daughter to a fancy restaurant for her birthday. Another showed a delivery man who used Hua Bei to buy a saxophone with the words, Don't scrimp on the things you love. Since the IPO was pulled, Ant Group and its top officials have said that they are rectifying their business and that Ant has made changes to how it lands. In December, the company said it had reduced credit limits for some younger borrowers to promote more rational spending habits without providing specifics. On Friday, March 12, Ant laid out a framework for how it would self-regulate its various digital finance business. As part of this, the company said it would lend responsibly and wouldn't extend loans to young and low-income borrowers beyond the sums needed to cover their basic living expenses. 26-year-old Yu Zhang Wang said his Hua Bei credit limit was recently cut to the equivalent of about $2,500 from more than $4,600. Mr. Wang lost his job last year at a vocational training institute in Beijing and fell behind on more than $30,000 in debt that he had racked up on outlays such as Gucci and Versace accessories, iPhones, and costly dinners. He said debt collectors had called him and his family, threatening lawsuits. Mr. Wang moved back to his hometown where he juggles working at a factory, driving for a ride-hailing company, and hosting wedding parties. He has also resold some purchases online. He has managed to slash his debt by two-thirds. However, economists say they don't expect China's online lending pullback to dampen overall consumer spending severely, given its importance to the economy. Beijing wants to keep economic growth up and so wouldn't go so far as to severely limit consumption. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly.